Welcome and thank you for joining us in our weekly devotions in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Health. Redemptorists, their friends and all of the devotees of Our Lady, how happy you can join us every week in prayer, song and reflection for this half hour. As we perhaps alone in our homes, apartments, hospitals and nursing homes, Look upon this most familiar picture of our mother of perpetual help today. Let us bring our lives to her, remembering that we are not really alone. Joining us are millions of people who, like ourselves, are also devotees of our mother of perpetual help from around the world, including the Philippines, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, and Australia and many countries from the Southern Hemisphere of the Americas, including Mexico, Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. In our Mother Church of St. Alphonsus in Rome, where the miraculous icon rests high above the main altar, and in all parts of Eastern and Western Europe, Ukraine and Russia, people are praying the same perpetual help devotions prayers in hundreds of different languages. In North America, people from New York, Boston, St. Louis, Seattle, New Orleans, people pray and sing God's praises through the perpetual novena. Here at home in Canada, more than 100 parishes across the country celebrate the devotions each week. And for more than 100 years, a St. Patrick's Church in downtown Toronto is a national shrine of Mother of Perpetual Help. There, the novena is celebrated six times every Wednesday bringing together more than a thousand people from nations all around the globe to pray the devotions novena. Together, we join our songs and thoughts in meditation and in prayer, seeking her intercession for our daily needs, spiritual and material, for ourselves and for our loved ones. And we know her son listens to her. From that single soft young mother's voice, in a remote shepherd's town, to now all of our voices from around the whole world, the son who was hers and whom she gave to us listens as lovingly today as he did when laying in a manger. So whenever we look upon this beloved icon, we do so with confidence that we never pray alone. Our joined voices in the millions are one in mind and heart Together, we hold the whole world up to Our Lady, praying for the needs of all God's people. This is our family of prayer, the prayer of the world, making the perpetual novena the ongoing daily prayer of millions each week. Let our voices now become one of these.
I'm especially grateful that my mom persevered in teaching me the rosary because it's a tool God used to teach me to forgive, to get to know his mom, and to teach me to listen to his son and his calling me to, to religious life. When I was growing up, my mom would pray the rosary with us before bed in my brother's room. My siblings and I were little goofs and we would always do things purposely to annoy her. We would pray really fast in high-pitched voices and then when she scolded us to slow down and be somewhat respectful, we would slow down and be like, Hail Mary, full of grace. And looking back now, I realize just how patient and faithful my mom was to keep praying with us, despite our silly tactics to get out of it. I moved out when I was 19. That was when I began to wrestle with going to Mass every Sunday, especially when questioned by my friends on the point of it all and faced with having to say no to dirt biking or going to the lake Sunday mornings, along with a lot of things that I had to give up. It got hard. Eventually, I started choosing to please my friends and my peers over God, and I began to slip. I worked hard to try and find a way to walk with Christ and the devil at the same time. I had to pick a side. During this time, I came across the book, John Paul the Great by Jason Everett. Inspired by Pope John Paul II's life, I made a final decision to choose Christ and live a life like St. John Paul the Great, or as we call him, JP II. This decision included getting to know Jesus through Mary, as JP II did. As I grew in my relationship with Christ and his mother, I became afraid that God was calling me out of my relationship with my boyfriend and into one with God alone, so I freaked out. I went to my mom and told her I needed a rosary to figure this out. I prayed frantically, begging God not to ask this of me. I remembered St. JP II's devotion to Mary during this time again, and I found the 33 Days to Morning Glory book, which looks at the process of consecration to Jesus through Mary. The day I consecrated myself to Jesus through Mary was one of the scariest, because I knew that if I did this, and if God was calling me to, to religious life, I wouldn't be able to ignore him anymore. A year or so went by, and I got hit by a new challenge. The person I love the most wounded me deeply. In desperation, I went looking for my rosary, and I didn't let go until Mary helped me forgive him. I remember wrestling with this during the fall while driving the combine. During the day, I'd pray the rosary on the combine. And at night, I'd beg Mary to change her son's mind or to help me want what he wants. It was also while driving the combine that I felt Christ say, just go see. Recently, I was hurt again, and this time I knew what to do. I went straight to my mom, to Mary, and she helped me forgive using the rosary. And I was able to forgive much easier. Also, with Mary's help, I worked up the courage to just go see. Last fall, I went to the Carmelite Monastery in Edmonton, and I'm going again in September for a month. Mary has been a part of my life as far as I can remember, but now she's not just some nice lady in the sky. She's my mom. Whenever I see her image, I say, that's my mom, or hey, my mom is here, and then I get these funny looks, and people are like, what is she talking about? And my favorite is when someone else will say, no, she's my mom. Then I know they're a sibling of mine in Christ and I get really excited about it. Mother of perpetual help, your very name inspires confidence. We come before your holy picture in praise and thanksgiving to God, seeking your intercession with Jesus, your son for all the needs of our lives today. We celebrate your holy motherhood as we proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. You answered when called to be mother of our Lord. Obtain for us the grace to be alive to our baptismal call and especially to embrace the gospel of life and to respect all life on earth. 
you wondered as your son grew in wisdom, knowledge, and grace. Intercede for us so that we may welcome the word of God in our lives and be bearers of the good news to one and all. You delighted as your son healed the sick. Intercede for our sick that they may receive good health and that they in their turn may be healers to others. You enjoyed peace as your son comforted the afflicted. Intercede for all who suffer so that they may know that we carry their burdens with them and in this way we keep the law of Christ. You rejoiced as your son forgave sins. Obtain for us the forgiveness of our sins and lead us to unbind others and set them free. You suffered at the wounds your Son endured for our salvation. Help us to bind up the brokenhearted and to give hope to the downtrodden. You exalted in your Son's resurrection. Obtain for us the grace to persevere in his way all the days of our life and be granted a place in heaven. You are the first of all the disciples and saints. We trust in your motherly love and care. Obtain for us all the graces we need to fulfill God's plan each day in our lives. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection implored your help or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen.
used to think that the word missionary and the word disciple meant two different things. A disciple sat at the feet of the master and soaked in his or her teachings. And a missionary was sent out, usually to a foreign country, to proclaim the good news. Thanks to Pope Francis, we now can see clearly that we are to be both. Pope Francis says, I invite all Christians everywhere at this very moment to a renewed personal encounter with Jesus Christ, or at least an openness to letting him encounter them. I ask all of you to do this unfailingly each day. No one should think that this invitation is not meant for him or her, since no one is excluded from the joy brought by the Lord. The Lord does not disappoint those who take this risk. Whenever we take a step toward Jesus, we come to realize that he is already there, waiting for us with open arms. And because we are rooted in this encounter, we are sent out toward others, becoming the means through which they are invited into an encounter and a relationship with Jesus Christ. But when we go out as missionary disciples, what language do we use? What words will convince others that a life echoing Jesus is a life worth living? Pope Francis has an answer for this question. We use the language of mercy. And mercy is a language not of words at all, but of deeds. Mercy is a language. It's the language that God speaks. It's not a language like English, Irish, French, or Portuguese. No, mercy is a language of the heart. It is a language of gestures and actions, of showing rather than saying how deeply you care, how much you want things to be better, how much you wish the pain would go away. If that's true, then the job of the Christian in today's world is to become bilingual. Jesus calls all of us to become fluent speakers in the language of mercy. How do you do this? It's like with every other language, you practice. You look for every opportunity to use your new language and you try it out. Sometimes you'll make mistakes but it's better to try than not to try. Sometimes you'll make yourself and others laugh with your stumbling and fumbling, but you'll laugh together and bonds will be created. You'll probably find that you learn more from the people you're trying to help than they learn from you. And that's a big part of God's mercy. We all teach each other. Mercy is the language God speaks. The challenge of missionary disciples today is to become bilingual in God's language of mercy and compassion and to share God's crazy love with crazy abandon in a world that desperately needs to know and experience this kind of love. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana in Galilee. Hear our prayers and grant our petitions in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Grant wisdom and courage to all our religious and civil leaders, our Holy Father, our bishops, and all who lead us, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant peace unity, and good harvests in all the world, especially in places of conflict, war, famine, and need, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant married couples the grace of their sacrament, wives and husbands a binding love for each other, parents the grace to welcome and cherish their children, single parent families, unity, and strength, and peace and blessings on all our homes, 
we pray. Hear us, Lord, to Mary, our Mother. Grant to our single adults fulfillment in their call, to our young people success in their endeavors, and courage to witness to their faith, to our elderly vitality, security, and contentment in their days, and to the separated and divorced, the grace of your Spirit, we pray. Hear us, Lord, to Mary, our Grant workers confidence in their work, dignity in their accomplishments, joy in their contributions, a just and living wage, and to the unemployed, grant gainful work, we pray. Hear us, Lord, to Mary, our mother. Grant to your church many laborers for the harvest, good priests, deacons, brothers, sisters, and laity, who will dedicate their lives to your faithful people, we pray. Hear us, Lord, to Mary, our mother. Grant eternal life to all the deceased and a place in the communion of the saints, where every tear shall be wiped away and where we shall meet you, our God, face to face, we pray. Hear us, Lord, to Mary, our mother. Grant to each of us the grace to do justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly with you each day of our lives. For whatever we do to the least of our sisters or brothers, we do to you, we pray. Hear us, Lord, to Mary, our mother. Let us pray. Mother of perpetual help, we who call on your most powerful name, thank you for the graces we have received through your intercession and for hearing our prayers today. For God, who is mighty, has done great things through you, and God's mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer and song in our devotions today. Thank you for your faithful prayers for all our people and their needs, especially for those of you who have sent in your prayer requests. Our volunteers read and answer every one of your letters. We know you pray for us and we pray for you. And thank you for your generous donations and financial support. Your donations, along with all of our supporters across Canada, have kept the devotions on TV for more than 20 years. Every donation, large and small, is precious to us and allows us to continue this ministry to you. The TV devotions gather over 40,000 people every week in homes, hospitals, seniors' residences, apartments, and Catholic schools as together we pray to God through Mary for the great spiritual and temporal needs of our people. Please help us if you can Make your check payable to Perpetual Help TV Devotions or go online to our website www.redemptrists.ca or www.redemptrists.tv and make use of the PayPal link we have established there for your convenience. Official charitable income tax receipts are mailed out monthly. Write to us with your prayer requests. Each week, we Redemptors offer a special Mass of Thanksgiving to God in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help for all of your intentions. If you would like a free prayer card like the one used on the TV devotions, write to us at the address on your screen. So now following along with your prayer card, a final blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, of perpetual help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Welcome to Devotions TV in this new age of mercy, produced by the Redemptorists of Canada on national TV every week since 1995. Now you can find this week's program streaming live every week on Redemptorist TV and many more special features. Please join us on Redemptorist TV. Tell your friends. Help us celebrate. Our program is made possible by you, the viewers, and our mother of perpetual help.